Okay, it is Christmas special time once again. And I've got my sleigh bells down here at the ready. And I do like sleigh bells all year round, really. And it reminds me of the Beach Boys or Now I Want to Be Your Dog by the Stooges or Airbag by Radiohead. So sleigh bells, not just for Christmas, kids. Anyway, a few weeks ago, I asked the wonderful people over on my Patreon page for some Christmas song suggestions. And because everyone there has such amazing taste in music, there were loads of good ones. It was actually quite hard for me to come to a decision. But in the end, I've decided to go for the Kinks Father Christmas this year. And this is arguably the greatest Christmas song, at least it's right up there in my opinion. And I already knew and loved the song, but as is often the case when I make these videos, by pulling it apart and analysing it for the video, I come to a renewed appreciation of how good it is and of the genius of Ray Davis and the Kinks. So I'm going to begin by playing through the track and because it's Christmas, I've put a full production together, sleigh bells and all. So let me do that, then we'll discuss what's going on and there's loads of good stuff happening here. So I hope it's going to be a fun lesson. It's an amazing song and this was a Christmas single in 1977 for the Kinks and this one only lasts for about three and a half minutes but it always feels a bit longer than that to me just because there are so many good ideas in there 
and the arrangement is really complex. The chords are great, the melodies, of course the lyrics are brilliant with a nice social message and I think if you want to learn about songwriting you could do much worse than studying how this song is put together. And of course the guitar stuff is brilliant too and I'm not sure exactly who plays what on this one. The rhythm guitar parts are double tracked so maybe it's Ray Davis in one speaker and Dave Davis in the other speaker. I think the lead guitar parts are certainly played by Dave Davis and there are some brilliant solos, some brilliant riffs so let's break it down. Now as far as the rhythm guitar stuff goes we've got three or four different riffs all of them played with bar chords or with power chords so if you're comfortable with both of those things you shouldn't have too many difficulties learning this song. And we're in the key of C, the song actually kicks off with some bells and piano stuff. Then the band kicks in and we've got this opening riff. Great way to start the song. And the interesting thing about this section of the tune is it seems to be in an odd time signature. I'm feeling it in 6-4 time as opposed to the usual 4-4 time which you find in the rest of the song. So the chords themselves are simple. Let me take you through the chords first of all, then I'll talk about the timing. So all of this is played with fifth string root major bar chords. So we've got a C chord down here at the third fret, and then we've got an F up at the eighth fret, and a G up at the tenth fret. So it's just one, four, five in the key of C. So twice on C, twice on the F. We're sliding up to the G and then we're back to the C and we go round again. But as I said the interesting thing here is the timing and it may be that you can just listen to the track and pick it up by ear and you don't need to go into all this counting stuff and that's better if you can actually do that but if you're struggling to find where the beat is in this one then it might help just to count this through. So the, the way I'm thinking about it is this, we've got one, two, three and four and five and six and one, two, four, five, six, one, two, three and four and five and six. So we're actually pushing into beat one once the riff gets going. One and two and three and four and five and six and one and Always with odd time stuff it feels awkward and unnatural to start with but once you've got a feel for it um, it's, it's hard to kind of feel or play that in any other way. So that's our opening riff and it actually crops up a few more times in the song where it's used underneath the guitar solo stuff so we're going to be getting into that a bit later on but before we do that I just want to whiz through the verse rhythm guitar and the chorus rhythm guitar and the verse progression goes like this. <laughs> So all of this played with bar chords and this time I'm playing a C uh, up at the 8th fret. So this is a 6th string root C major bar chord. Then we're going to an E minor chord. This is a 5th string root E minor bar chord. Uh, normally when I play these 5th string root bar chords I'm not pressing down on the 6th string. I'm often just muting that with the tip of my first finger. I think with this song you do actually want to press down that 6th string and then you get a B in the bass so technically this chord is a second inversion E minor chord it's E minor over B and the advantage of that is you get this nice bass line you've got that nice smooth descending bass line that's often a good way to use inversions just as a way of creating a smooth bass line so here we've got the C E minor over B and again that smoothly connects to an A minor and then down to a G. So two beats on each of those chords. I think you're generally just emphasizing the lower notes in each of those chords, chugging away with the eighth notes, maybe a bit of palm muting. The end of the phrase there it's just going with the vocals you've got that little bit of a rhythm in there and okay
occasionally I think you can just add in some upstroke accents, just bringing out some of the higher strings. So that's the first part of the verse. I think that chord progression goes around four times. And then there's an interesting little twist. The verse seems to go in a different direction and we go to A minor, which is the relative minor to C. And that corresponds to a bit of a scene change in the lyrics as well. So it's a really clever piece of songwriting, this. Um, and we've got this chord progression. And we've got A, G, F, and E. I think mostly I'm just hearing power chords here. So. And then we're back to the previous chord progression. build on the G before we go into the chorus. Then we're into the chorus which goes like this. So like with the introduction this is played with the C, F, G, fifth string root bar chords and this is in 4-4 four, four time it's a bit more straightforward we're starting on the 4 chord which is the F down to the C F F and C F and C F F G G that repeats and then when we hit the G the second time we've got this little move G, G, F, G, F, G, and then the same move two frets lower. For the little rich boys, a stop on that G chord up at the 10th fret. So that's kind of it for the rhythm guitar parts. There's not much more new material in there. But what's so interesting about the arrangement is it doesn't quite repeat the same way twice. So we've got more verses and more choruses. The second verse is slightly different. You haven't got that minor section. And then that minor section comes again at the start of the third verse. And the second chorus is shorter than the first and third choruses. So all of these kind of quite complex arrangement things. I imagine it must have driven the kinks mad when they were trying to put this together in the studio. I'm sure there were lots of the usual fights and arguments going on, but it really is a clever piece of songwriting. So I won't bore you with all of that stuff now, but if you are interested in the super nerdy details, then do check out my transcription, my tab, which is going to be up on the Patreon page. Let's talk about these lead guitar parts then. And they happen after every chorus, or after most of the choruses in the song and they're played over that 6-4 time signature and typical Dave Davis they're pretty wild pretty loose so I'm going to try and approximate what's going on here rather than play them note for note which is not really possible for me so the first little guitar break goes something like this <laughs> And we're in the key of C, remember, and Dave Davis is using the C minor pentatonic and then a bit of the C major pentatonic as well, starting with a C minor pentatonic lick. So starting with that high C, bending at 11 on the B. Then we're resolving to this E note here. This is the major third at the ninth fret on the third string. And then we're going to C major pentatonic. Remember, C minor pentatonic becomes C major pentatonic if you move it down three frets. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And we've got... So quite a simple little phrase here, just played out of this box shape. 5-7 on the D, 5-7 on the G. Got this nice octave idea so we've got a C at the fifth fret on the third string another C at the eighth fret on the top string and we're just bouncing back and forth between those two notes um, then you can hear the open B string coming in and then for the final bit of this little solo or this first guitar break we're back up into C minor pentatonic 
playing around with this bend at the 11th fret on the top string. And resolving to the root. So one more time, I'll just play all of that together. Then the second guitar break, this is more of a main guitar solo, this is twice as long. It starts in exactly the same way. Dave Davis obviously had this fixed lick to begin with and then it goes in a slightly different direction. So we've got this once again. Uh, more of this octave thing but a slightly different rhythm. Um, then back up to the C minor pentatonic once again. I can't remember the exact lick there. And we finish with some of this unison bend stuff. So. And then it sounds to me like another guitar comes in, maybe an overdub, just playing some kind of. kind of chromatic y type stuff. So maybe 8, 9, 10 on the D. And maybe that goes up an octave, or there's another guitar playing it up here. And then we're into the breakdown section. And then for that final guitar break, right towards the end of the song, same lick to begin with. Then we're straight into that chromatic y thing again. There's a nice little lick which is something like this. And then we've got more of that unison bending stuff to finish. And the detail in this song is fantastic. And just for the sake of completeness, there are a couple of little licks hiding in there that you can hear during the second minor section in the verse, the bit that goes. And you can hear these little bending ideas. So this one, and then this one. So the first one is just 12th fret on the B and G, bending both those strings up a fret or two. And then I've got a similar idea on the top two strings, so 12 on the high E, 13 on the B, and just again just bending those two strings up. Quite kind of country flavoured those licks. And then going into the next course, you've got something like this. Um, it's a kind of fourth side here, it's a bit hard to tell which octave it's in, whether it's just overtones I'm hearing in there, but it's something like going into the 12th fret on the G and D or same thing, an octave higher. Let me talk you through the gear that I'm using today. Yeah, it's a new guitar. This is a Trent Model 1 and I got it a couple of weeks ago. I'm actually going to be telling you all about this guitar in an upcoming video, so I'm not going to go into too much detail now, but it's hand built by a British guitar maker and uh, it sounds fantastic. I thought particularly for this song, the two P90s just had that lovely punky snarl and bite. Then for the lead parts, I'm using my Les Paul. And I imagine that's what Dave Davis would have used on the studio recording. It's certainly what you see him using in live footage that I've seen and in the songs video. So this guitar seemed to work well for the solo stuff. Then amp wise, I'm going through my Vox AC30 and just using one pedal today. And that is the Nobles ODR1 overdrive pedal. And I realise I'm a bit late to the party with this particular overdrive pedal, but I picked it up a few weeks ago. And uh, yeah, as everyone says, it's a fantastic and affordable overdrive pedal. It's got a little bit more gain and a bit more bite than my regular clone style pedals. So I think it's a good addition to my overdrive pedal collection. It's probably going to see quite a bit of use, I think. So there we are. If you'd like tab and a backing track for this one, that's going to be over on my Patreon page. And I think this is probably going to be my last video of the year. So it just remains for me to wish you all a Merry Christmas and to thank everyone for watching the videos this year and for the support. So thanks a lot. I'll see you next year. Merry Christmas.